Hi, this is Mike again. In this tutorial, we're going to look at Google Forms quizzes. Okay, so in order to access Google Forms quizzes, um, you can come up here to the nine dots or the waffle and uh, look at all of your different Google apps. And you can click on the one that says Forms. And you can also open up a Google, uh, Google search and type in Google Forms. Okay, and let's just do that. And uh, what you can do is uh, make sure that you are using Chrome um, and uh, instead of one of the other browsers like Edge or um, Firefox. And if you use Chrome, it should be pretty easy. And uh, you can see right here that the Google search uh, yielded um, Google's form link. So you can click on that to get to the same page as it would take you when you went to the waffle. Okay, so what you wanna do is go ahead and just start a new form by clicking the plus. And uh, from there, it's really easy. Um, right here, you have um, a lots of different choices, um, and you can manipulate those choices with this drop-down menu on the right-hand side, okay? So you can do short answers, paragraphs, multiple choice, check boxes, drop-downs. Um, so check boxes are, would be those questions where there's multiple answers, and multiple choice would be the one where there's like one answer. Um, so you can do that. Also, too, is you can do uh, multiple choice and checkbox grids, linear scales for like uh, you know, like the best possible answer. So you do like a one to five, um, like five being, um, you know, mostly correct and one being not correct at all. Any way that you want to manipulate it, um, you can do that. Um, so those are pretty good. Um, those are usually good for surveys. Um, the ones that say something like, uh, um, you know, satisfied, mostly satisfied, dissatisfied, mostly dissatisfied, those types of things. Um, and then the multiple choice grid, um, those are a little bit more complicated and I have a separate video on that. Um, also too, here is you can put file uploads, um, that allows your respondents to upload, um, different things. For example, as if you're a teacher and you need, um, you know, like a picture reference of something or, uh, you know, a certain, um, you know, highlighted, uh, portion of like a Google doc, they screenshot it or something like that. Um, you could add that to the responses as well. Um, so it's as simple as like for multiple choice, um, something like this and you can go the best color is, all right. And then here you can just the options red. Okay. And then you uh, just click add option and then you can put blue and then add option. So as many as, uh, as you'd like. Um, and then uh, what you can do, let's just go ahead and put green. Okay. And uh, then if you wanted to further um, kind of work with this in order to, um, you know, change things like, uh, first of all, making it a quiz and then deciding on what parameters you want for the quiz. Um, so across this bottom bar, you can copy questions, you can delete them. You can also make them required. I've set it for default um, to make every question required. Um, and that's great with quizzes if you're a teacher because um, you want the students to answer all the questions. The other thing you can do is you can add um, further descriptions. You can go to um, go to section based on answer. And really what that's for is um, it's kind of like you can do a choose your own adventure, right? If they answer this way, they go to this section of your um, quiz. If they answer this way, they go to this section of your quiz. Some teachers will do that where um, they'll put a certain answer and it will take them to like... Uh, uh, if they get it correct, they'll move on with the quiz. If they get it wrong, they have to do like a follow up. Um, and then that will lead them back to the same question where they can try to answer it again. It's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more time consuming, but it does give you, um, you know, some more options uh, to create sections. Um, you can see this equal sign down here. Um, I have a whole other video on creating sections. Um, but some of the other things you can add in here, you can add videos. So what you could do is you could add a video and so if I put a uh, different, uh, like a video in here, I do the school news and then I can insert a video. And then what I can do is if I title it, okay. And then if I title that, then what I can do is underneath that, I can ask a multiple, cho multiple choice question based on the video. And all you have to do is just click on the video icon. And then what you do here is you just go add question. And then here you can add the question that goes along with the video. Now, the other thing that you can do, okay, is you can add an image. So this little image icon next to the question kind of accomplishes the same thing. 
Um, but that's a, just a, for a picture that's embedded with a question. So if you have like a map question, you can click this, you can choose your map by browsing, and then you can ask your question related to that map. Um, you can also put text headers, so uh, additional titles and questions. You can add uh, just a, a picture, and this uh, picture here will just show up kind of like this video did in its own separate section, okay? And then um, you can also import questions. Um, that's kind of fun because you can, as long as it's kind of like in a multiple choice, like easy format from like a Word document or PDF, um, it does a pretty good job of copying in questions from other tests. Um, so you just click that, right? And then you can, you know, click whatever document um, that you want to use to import that stuff. So that's kind of the setup of the quiz, right? You can title it, descriptions, you can put links in and um, all, you know, use all of these things to create your, um, your titles and your descriptions. Then where the power comes in with this is going to be through the settings, right? So you make it a quiz, then you get start getting, you know, um, some of these uh, possibilities here. So once I make it a quiz, I'll show you how that changes the questions when I go back. Okay, so I made it a quiz. Um, I can um, release the grades immediately after the student presses submit. And that's great if you have auto grading. And I'll show you how that works. You can also do the lock mode. So once they're in um, on their Chromebook, once they're in the quiz, um, that they can't use any other tabs, meaning they can't go back and cheat. They can't open up like, you know, a, a Chrome screen at the same time and then try to look up the answers. And then there's a couple of other parameters here. So it's um, respondents can see which questions were answered correctly. Uh, respondents can see correct answers after the grades are released and then their point values. And then you can set a default point value. Um, you can also do it per question. Okay. And then under responses, um, you can see you can um, collect email addresses, which I do anyway. Um, so uh, the verification means that they have to just uh, click a box and it includes their address. You can send them a copy of the responses. You can allow editing, which um, is off for the quiz. You can restrict it to your organization. You can also limit to one response. Okay, so which is what you want to do if it's a quiz. And then down here under presentation, right, you can show the progress bar. And this is a big one. You can shuffle the question order, right? So the question order, um, if you're doing a quiz, is especially important because every uh, time a student opens it, it'll show the questions in a different order. So pretty cool. Um, now, uh, you can also put a custom response. Um, this isn't really as necessary for a quiz, but what it would do is like for, you know, like a survey, um, you could fill out the form and then at the end, it would put up a link to take you somewhere. Sort of like, you know, did you enjoy your experience at Disneyland? Okay, we'll click this link for a free prize or something. Um, that, that's what this is kind of used for here. Um, and then the results summary, and then it says disable auto stay, auto save for all respondents, um, and then form defaults. Okay. So I have, um, mine collects automatically and then question defaults. And then that's where I'm able to make all the questions required. Okay. So if I go back to the questions and I click here, now you can see that I made it a quiz. Now it gives me an option for an answer key. Okay, right, so I can change the points and I also can choose what is the best color here in that question. So the best color is they have to um, answer blue. Um, you, can, you can do feedback for more complex questions. Okay, so for incorrect answers, you can put something down there for correct answers, so on and so forth. You can put links and videos, so that's pretty cool. Um, but this one is cool. So let's say each uh, one is five, uh, each question is five points. I've selected the right answer. I click done. So now when the when the student answers this question, the best color is, they put blue, it's automatically going to grade it for you um, and award the five points. And then when it's done, it'll give you, um, you can uh, actually under responses, okay? So when they start responding, you can actually go link to sheets and it will create a spreadsheet and the total points correct um, for each question. That And then you can use that to upload into your LMS. That's your learning management system uh, with the grades already done. Okay, so that's kind of a quick Google quiz tutorial. Um, and uh, I have, do have separate uh, ones on some of the finer details like the grid questions and things like that. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me.